everyone, life ain't all sugar and rainbows, but it's a great life because this week, <laughs> okay, it's a great podcast because this week we have a lot of news to talk about. BlizzCon was so awesome. We had Diablo 4, it exists, and Overwatch 2. We're going to be talking about those two things. The streaming wars between Twitch and Mixer can keep on heating up. Why? And yes, Apex Legends Duos is now available. So we're going to talk about possible team combinations because we love us some Apex. And of course, we can't stop without the Persona 5. P5 Royal is here and, you know, Alex is a huge fan. So he's going to just talk about that all over the place anyways get your sugar and rainbows ready follow us on twitter at ugp underscore cast and leave a message on our anchor page because we want to hear from you and we love you now enjoy the show everyone welcome to episode number nine of the unknown games podcast i'm back uh adrian your host not like i ever left or went anywhere and of course alex is here with me today um, what's up I'm, I'm alex and i'm back that's right from outer space and from all things awesomeness yeah i just had a short trip in outer space i'll be back i won't, I won't be going again for a while so don't worry about it so only the rich and famous go up there but alex alex went up there personally off of his own fame uh, <laughs> i have no clue where i'm going with this but uh this is the unknown games podcast and where we talk about video games all sorts of video games and of course anime we had yeah last episode we just we we talked a lot of anime i'm not gonna lie <laughs> yeah well that's fine i mean it's literally in the show's description so i think we're allowed to for a little bit we are allowed to and it was a good it was a great episode uh and we want to say to everyone yeah, thanks for all your support. We 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 are looking at the numbers. Yeah, um, that's totally cool. So wherever you choose to listen to your podcast, whether that's like Apple Podcasts, Spotify has a pretty big podcast selection, uh, or Google or whatever, or even just our anchor page, you know, you can listen to us wherever you want to. And we're here for you. New episodes every Friday. We make it as interesting as possible for you. And like I said, we talk games. And this week... I've I've actually been playing a lot of games. I've been yeah, I've been yeah, gaming. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, while we get started with that, then. So, what yeah. uh, what games have you been really going through this week? Uh, I've been going through some old favorites of mine, and then also some, some new new games. So, I guess new game wise, I did beat Gris. Gris. Okay. I think I already said that, but if I right. didn't, it was a very mm -hmm. beautiful game. It's kind of a short game, right? That's kind of why you were able to 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 get through it. Yeah, it was only around I don't know six eight hours six hours. Mm -hmm. Six hours, so I beat that. Uh, and then I moved on to um, moved on to just playing. What did I play after that? Guacamole two. Played a little bit of that. I did play the first one and beat that. I don't know, seven years ago. I love how yeah. the game opens up. Like it opens yeah. up with a recap of the first game. Okay. okay. It, yeah, it lets you play out the final battle, and it says previously seven years ago. In Guacamole one. <laughs> okay. So you don't like maybe if you're just playing two, you can just be like, I don't really like know what happened, but you'll get all caught up. You'll get all caught up. And it's pretty I mean, you you won't know the characters. And I'm just about maybe, I don't know, fifteen, thirty minutes into the game. So you won't know the characters if you're just popping into it. But if you did play one, it's pretty funny because Juan is, you know, he used to be a hero. And his luchador mask, which gave him all of his powers, at the end of the game got got kind of, you know, broken. So he's lost everything. Uh, he saved the world, which is great, but he wakes up and you start playing him and he's just got a gut. His 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 gut is huge. <laughs> oh, from not like being active, right? From not being active. And that's like essentially, oh dude, you've lost all your power and fame. You're just just back to being old one with two kids and a wife. Which you didn't have before. So he just like a what's the word? Kind of like a a family man, right? As Guile with, from Street Fighter would say. Yeah, yeah. Go home and be a family man, Ken. That's that is a uh, old one now. He's a family so that, man. That, yeah. So that's what he has. 
become, I guess. That's what he has in common. And like yeah, the good thing about on. the game is uh, immediately the music is, you know, it's back on full on, I don't know, full blasting awesomeness, uh, which is a lot of, I, I don't know, like, what would you call that kind of, I don't want to sound horrible here. Um, when luchadors are fighting, that kind of vibrato, that Mexican awesome festival music i'm going to sound horrible but that's going uh, on <laughs> you're trying to like you're trying to not say something uh, offensive right yes. it, uh, mariachi yeah. wait it's mariachi right i you know what i'm i don't know i actually i don't know no, i've I, never wa- i've never watched luchador wrestling or anything so. i think it's like mariachi music just look okay. at mariachi ma- mariachi bands it, it yeah. has that kind of feel and music to it and it's, it's very self-aware of itself uh the game in terms of humor so i i can highly recommend it um definitely go check that out if you if you haven't another game that i started playing was um started up luminous remastered uh on you're playing on steam right you you got it for pc yeah i played it on uh on steam i bought it for steam on the sale that was just going yeah, on. yeah like a lot of a lot of music games were on sale it's really great and they had like and they had some really good music games like not only luminous but they also had um was it Crypt of the Necromancer as well? Yes, for very cheap. Very cheap. And there was a huge bundle for 60 bucks, I think, that had all of, you know, Celeste. I picked that up as well. Uh-huh. Um, Luminous, Bastion, a couple other right. music games, plus their soundtracks. And I was like, that's tempting. So tempting. Yeah. But yeah, Luminous, I've played that to death on PSP. I can honestly say there's either 500 plus more hours in that game. And I used to just zone out and mindlessly play it. So that was like originally a PSP game, right? Yep. Launch title PSP. Right. And then um, I think it was like an Xbox One, like live arcade version. I'm feeling there was. And then... There's an Xbox live arcade version, which had the uh, vibrating controllers. Well, oh, similar to Res, right? Yeah, similar to Res. And and after that, they actually made an iPhone version, which I bought that. Oh, as yeah. Well. Oh, yeah, they did. And then, of course, there's like Luminous 2, which I don't like as much just because of the song selection. Sorry, Gwen Stefani. Holla back, girl. That was in Luminous 2? Because I had no idea. That was in Luminous 2. <laughs> okay. That's it, was, it was a little bit more poppy. Uh, but yeah, I, I've been yeah. playing it and enjoying it. Okay. I also started up uh, Soma, which was free on the Epic Game Store. Oh, over- for... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they do a lot of free, um, free games, uh, the Epic Game Store, I mean. I'm I'm very help I'm very happy cuz I've always wanted to play a game from that studio and I have like amnesia and everything but I haven't I mean I'm not the biggest horror gamer the the farthest I've ever gone to that genre is like Resident Evil and Dead Space and mm-hmm. I don't think you can count those on a level of you know something like a Siren or uh Silent Hill Silent Hill still creeps me out Oh uh, yeah, you mean like the original sound like the first maybe three yeah. right like not so yeah. not so much the newer modern ones but yeah Right I think the uh, last I one was, yeah, so the last, was, was the last one. Last one was not made by Konami. I think they outsourced no, it. It was outsourced. Was it four or something? Or oh, not wasn't four. I think it was like I want. I want to say like, oh uh, god, it was something dumb like Book of Shadows or something like that. Like Book of something. The Forbidden Books. Let me look it up. I will say Book of the Memories. Book of Memories. Book of Memories. Okay. If well, you haven't watched. Was... The most recent one. The most recent one. Uh, no, I called it. Yeah, it was Book of Memories. That's oh, the most recent. Yeah, it, you have good memory. Yeah. What was the downpour? It said they both came out in 2012. So who knows? One of them was good. One of them was bad. Or they were both. Uh, bad. No, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure they were both bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, dude, even PT, like when PT the demo was out, like I could not play that. No, not by myself in a dark room. Mm-mm. PT yeah, was, PT yeah. was good. That's For not just, even like a. Yeah, it's not even a real game, right? It's not. It's not. A, it's just a demo. You walk around literally in an endless loop. But that game, honestly, that game will go down in history um, because of what it is and the promise that it, you know, that it gave gamers. But they never followed through because obviously, you know, Kojima left Konami, right? He did a PT on out that place. Yeah. So you know, that game will. I th- I feel like PT will, will will go down into, you know, like the the legend of the legend of gaming. Yeah, because yeah. like let's say you know, let's say you're you're coming up on gaming now. Maybe you're you're 10, 11, 12 years old. Right? You you were really young when when PT was a thing on the PlayStation Store. Right. That was PlayStation Three, right? 
That was PlayStation oh, 4. 4. 4. I'm dumb. It was PlayStation yeah, 4, yeah. Dumb. Yeah, I'm dumb. Sorry. Uh, PS4. But my point is, is like, that was still a couple years ago at this point. So you right. would have been like, so you would have been like six or seven or whatever, right? Probably never played P3 or P- PT, but maybe you've heard about it. And then by but the time it, yeah. you, yeah, by the time you're like old enough to like start, you know, I guess spreading your, your gaming wings out there, you might come across this game that people were talking about called PT. Uh, but because it was never physically released, they pulled it from the PlayStation Store, digital only. Right. Uh, you know, all these things make the game impossible to play. Like, it's going to be like the next generation's like, you know, rare game, I think. What it, I mean, it's even more rare because, I mean, it's, it's no longer available on the store. You can't yeah. download the demo. It's, it's pulled. Yeah. So it's, either you downloaded it pulled, before yeah. and you never deleted it, which means like potentially... I mean, barring, I, I don't know if it came out on PC as a demo no, or not. No, 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 PS4 so, PS only. Yeah. So you need to have a PS4 and sell it to someone. <laughs> but there's so many things that are complicated about like, you know, this thing, because like you said, like I actually downloaded it as well, but I deleted it, you know, because thinking like, oh, I can re-download it whenever I want and I'm safe. Right, right. That's not true anymore. They made yeah. it like if you, if, if it's off your console, you can't get it anymore. You can't get it anymore. I'm not, I'm not even sure like, um. I think it's Transformers Devastation that was pulled from the PlayStation Store as well. Now yeah. it was a PlayStation Plus game. I haven't, so it's in my PlayStation Plus library. So I always wonder, like, can I re-download it? Maybe. Yeah, I'm. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure you can re-download it because usually for those things, as um, long as you, as long as I don't know PT. I feel like PT is very different. PT is like just gone. Yeah, it's straight up gone. So it's it's. It's rare, and if you do have it, enjoy it. Let your friends enjoy it. Perfect game for Halloween. I know, like, uh, Halloween happened. A lot of people go back to Bloodborne. God, Bloodborne is amazing. I love that game. But PT, that that's a good one to, to stream. It, yeah, and it's not even like, like you said, like you have to like you have to sell a console with that game on it, right? Yeah, it's not it's not that simple because like a console in nowadays is like tied to your online to account, your online account. So you have to sell your account yeah or you have to like make a new account and change all your password and then and then sell that console and then you know like it's so messy just to get your hands on this game i can't believe even, like yeah like we spoke more about pt than about soma <laughs> it's, but well it, it, but, i mean the thing is is pt at that time was so much of a community event that yeah. people played the demo so many times around the world just to find every bit of secret like all the secrets that were hidden within it to see if there was an actual ending i mean like this thing was well there unlevel. was you you could escape the house eventually and then that, that girl she scared me though yeah lisa is, is pretty freaky does she freaky I don't, did you hear I don't... did you hear like the guy did the camera hack and it turns out lisa is actually always following you See, I don't get down like that. That's why I don't watch horror movies. That's why I don't play horror games. But I, I tried Soma, and like I, I can say Soma is a little bit more along the lines of uh, not. And it's not Resident Evil, of course. It's it's Dead Space. I'll say it's Dead Space level. Okay, which is kind of like jump scary, right? Which is a little bit jump scary. And I haven't gotten to anything that's super scary at the moment. I've played two, three hours of the game. But I do like how there's a lot of exploration. It is very narrative driven. And yeah, I mean, I I do find myself actually creeping around because the audio design is very good. And it makes you kind of want to you know you hear all the bumps inside the ship and you're like, "Uh, is this a person moving or is this just the ship creaking? Mm. I want to take it easy in this little part, but that's all I've been playing. I've been enjoying uh, these games, honestly. Played more games in the past week than I've played in the past year. I mean, that's good. Maybe you can keep that up. I don't know. I'm gonna try. <laughs> I'm gonna try. I don't know, man. What What, what about you? Uh, honestly, I've only just been playing Persona because that came out uh, on yes. Thursday in Japan, like on on Halloween, right? They did clean. So, uh. I played a little bit on the day that it came out. Uh, I was working that day, so I kind of played over lunch and then a little bit after after I finished up work. Okay. Um, and then, you know, just the weekend, uh, I've just been... I That's where I put most of my hours in. It's long, by the way. Like, it's a Persona game. It doesn't mess around. It's a lot of story. So, 
I'm not that far in the grand scheme of things, but it's still good. I still really like it. Right. Um, I've already seen a couple of new scenes. Uh, so there's a new character. If you if you didn't know, they're adding like a well a brand new party member. Right. Uh, right. So I've seen a couple of things with her. Um, just some scenes that were tweaked a little bit. And but other than that, I mean, like it's more or less the same game that I played a couple of years ago. Okay. Which I don't mind all that much because it's still a good game. But I am, you know, obviously I don't want to play the same game again. So I, I'm looking right. forward to to getting into the, the newer, newer content. There's like a yeah. new semester. There's like a new area to explore. Uh, a bunch of new scenes and stuff. So I'm just waiting for for that to to come around. To come around. How long have you been playing? Like how or not how long? But you know. How many hours are you into it again? Uh, I'm a little over like 10 hours at this point. Okay. Which in, in, in the grand scheme of things, Persona 5 is a long, long, long That's game. Long. Well, yeah, yeah. The game's over 100 hours. So I'm like just a tenth of the way through. You're a tenth of the way through. So hopefully like the newer content uh, isn't too far buried. You know what I mean? Like it, you don't have to play 50 hours or something to get to the newer content. But yeah, well, I mean, they're sprinkling a bunch of stuff in there and like, uh i just want to know how it unfolds because they're they're introducing the new character pretty early like, on yeah she's she's there like you, you oh, like, take, start, you, like you take the train to school and you bump into her okay. and then you're like oh this is a new character and then she's i think she slowly starts you know in, integrating herself into the party I, I don't know how yet i haven't gotten that far but okay um but from the very you've never played persona right so I, you probably wouldn't get this i haven't played persona 5 i've only played persona 3 and a little bit of 4 so Persona 5 starts like it, it I, I call it like the, the Tarantino thing where it starts out in the middle of the story. Oh, OK. And then you like kind of work. You, yeah. So you, you play through like a chunk of the story. Like you, the game just starts you off in the middle of this of this chaos, like this chaotic scene. Right, right. And you have uh, you're controlling the main character, controlling, you're controlling Joker. And then your party members are talking to you, but you, you, the player, you don't know them yet. So they kind of just show up as like silhouettes. Okay. And it's like, man, like boy's voice, girl's voice. They're like, oh, I don't really know who these guys are, but okay. Um, so in Royal, she introduces, like she appears in that scene. Um, you know, obviously she wasn't in the, in the vanilla game. In the original, right. So, but her dialogue is really interesting. So she says like when she, Oh man. So when you see her in that in that scene, she's just like, I, I've paid off my debt to you. Um, so she already knows you, but you don't know. Yeah, which well, you know who she is. Um okay, you can okay. tell by the other interaction. Okay, oh she she calls you a senpai as well. So obviously you know who she is, but Senpai. Um so she's like, I paid off my debt to you, and then she's also she's also like, uh, you haven't forgotten our promise. And she's also like, um, I can't like stand in your way because i'm not a phantom thief which is interesting because okay, the phantom right. thieves are like the group the party everyone right, collectively right. is the phantom thief all the persona users uh but the fact that she has a persona but is calling herself not a phantom thief is like something has happened i think in the story like i don't we don't know how like i don't know how yet but like it's something I feel like is she's, Something yeah, she has joined, changed. She joins the party, maybe, and then she like leaves it for some reason. Like I'm not sure why or how yet. So that little intrigue is interesting. Well, it's definitely going to be like I'm looking forward to hearing it next week. Like after you've played a little bit more, and hopefully don't run into Death Stranding. <laughs> yeah, Death Stranding is like what? It's like six days from now. Like it's, it's six not... days, November eighth, man. It's it's coming along. It's. And I, I've started to see some of the re reviews. And I don't oh. want to see it, but it's just like Twitter. You know, you're scrolling down, and all of a sudden, those are interesting. By the way, if you want to like talk about the review, the reviews really quickly, because like some people don't like that game. They like really I, I, don't like, like it. I, I saw Greg Miller. His Twitter post was literally, it's like um, crap. Metal Gear fused with. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of the game on PlayStation. Where you're in space, that people hated at first but love now. Space exploration. Oh my goodness! Why am I blanking on this game? Um, the one with the procedurally generated planets. Yes, that one. Yeah, that one. Uh, 
we're, we're like losing all our gaming cred now. I'm like, wow. No, I can see the box cover in my it's mind. So, I, it's so yeah, bad. It's like, so um, vivid. I, I know the game. The you game that people worse? hate, yeah, it's, no, but then they patched it. They patched it afterwards. People, it's and, okay and now. And it's so bad because I'm thinking Lost Planet in my head. I'm like, no, why am I thinking Capcom Lost game. Planet? And I know it's not Lost Planet. It's so bad. Um, oh, God damn. Yeah, uh, everyone. Uh, just, uh, we're going to... Uh, Juju wants book held on space game space game PS4. bad reviews <laughs> uh here we are games with notable negative reception on wikipedia so we just scroll to the uh, 2010s and no man's sky no man's sky <laughs> oh my <laughs> we're, we're just like trust us trust us everyone games with it. notable negative reception no man's sky <laughs> by the way if you want to see what other games are on this list there's star wars battlefront 2 yeah uh, fallout That's... 76 yes these are all very notably bad uh, what overkill else is overkill is the walking dead and okay, left alive yeah. which really hurts my soul actually left i had high hopes for left alive and then it sucked apparently what the heck is left alive? let's not oh. get into what left alive is i all feel right. like i will look it up and be like no i when you look at left live you're like oh how could that be bad like, good art good studio like why would that be and i don't know apparently it just sucked so i think i just hit cortana and cortana might have just boop, boop. uh anyways uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah okay so that's what greg miller was saying so he was saying it's very polarizing but he liked it anytime you use the word polarizing i just said polarizing okay so uh, there's gonna be a lot of people who don't like it and a lot of people who do i've seen other uh tweets that have other like the head of gorilla app ah, gorilla games like he's in the game kind of like jeff Keeley, kind of like possibly conan o'brien uh-huh so conan o'brien yeah that was wild but okay yeah yeah so there's a lot of guest appearances in the game potentially but i don't know the reviews are saying like maybe the gameplay doesn't hold up as much as the rest of the game mm. i don't know i mean all we've seen are is a guy walking across the country as a delivery man. There's literally like all, all the trailers. It just you just see uh, some dude hiking across the little land. Every once in a while, he fights or he yeah, runs away he, like, from a runs fight. away from stuff. Yeah, and I'm like, well, this game looks okay. Like, <laughs> and, and and that's it. Like, uh, like literally, the only thing that I believe is carrying it is just the the is Kojima, like his his reputation, what he's done in the past, you know, which he's yeah. well deserved. We're just gonna have to trust him that the game is good, I guess. Well, you'll be playing it before I will. I'm gonna be playing all the oldies of what I bought on PC. Well, sales. I'll probably I'll probably buy it at launch, but I don't think I'll finish it very soon, to be honest, because I'll be pushing through Persona. And then Pokemon. Yeah, man. I See? I gotta yeah, I don't honestly I don't even know about Pokemon. Like, Once we get to it. Cyberpunk. It's time for me to upgrade a PC. Well, there's a lot of games that are just coming out on, like, in, sorry, not on PC, but just games that are coming out in the next, in like, general. three, four months. Yeah, it's going to be a tough time. Uh, don't be... forget FF7 is coming out, you know, like, next year. Hey, it's year. okay. That That's March. I can pass on that, too. I'm, like, because, I, you know, the way I look at gaming now is I have to play, whatever I play, I need to finish it before I move on to the next one because I'm tired of building up the backlog. And now I'm finally going through the backlog and it feels good to go through the backlog or at least to start on some of those games. And I don't know, it's good to finish games. So I want to uh -huh, kind of yeah. continue on that track. But, you know, these tentpole games, FF7, Last of Us 2, uh, Death Stranding and Cyberpunk, like, it's hard to sit out on all that. It's hard to sit out. Yeah, I think for me, at least, as long as I get through a significant portion of the game, so in my like for me to feel like I can form a good opinion about that game, and yeah. I feel like that I played most of it, then I can be like, okay, well, I didn't finish it, and that's that's fine. I'm just gonna move on to something that makes me happy. Like I want to play a game that I get excited about. But that's true. But you know, just as long as I can say that I've given a game a fair shake, like you don't want to take a game like FF15 or something where. A lot of the systems, the actual game of the the game, I guess, is like locked away behind significant story checkpoints, right? Now, I'm, you don't you don't want to yeah. be like, oh, I played for five hours and it wasn't for me. But you, you know, a, a person who says that hasn't played the game in a sense because they're they're still missing significant like they're still missing play. it, yeah, mechanics and, right that I haven't played yet. Right. So. And and that's part of like a good game design, right? You have to have a good pace of 
how you're unveiling the mechanics. And, and, and that's something that, you know, Final Fantasy 13 was slammed. Oh, for. God. Yeah. Slammed just, for. Get your 30 hours. In. Up. Yep. Yeah. Get your 30 hours in before you get the full combat. <laughs> I was I was just about to bring that up. Um because and I love that yeah. combat. I, I won't lie. Me that too, me too. That combat the, it's so good. It's was so good. So good. I yeah. I just remember, you know, I hate some of the characters. I don't like I, I think we can all universally say we don't like snow or hope. Uh <laughs> lightning is a broke cloud. And, um um yeah. Vanille, we gotta get your accent fixed, girl. But you know, you cool. Fang, you can all you you welcome. Yeah, to Fang cookout. is good. Fang is good. Fang is good. Fang, Fang is you welcome. Top notch. Shaz, yeah. you know, I like him. He's funny. I love you. I love yeah, you. He's, and he's good. So, so you, Fang, and Vanille, and hope you're just good for your magic. Uh, a lot of people say this. Is, sorry, I just wanna. <laughs> I was about to get to sidetrack us, but people are gonna say like Saz was like racist. People were saying he was like a racist character. Life ain't all sugar and rainbows. That was my favorite quote. <laughs> that was my favorite <laughs> quote from that game. <laughs> Life ain't all sugar and rainbows. Oh, oh man. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that was the name of that chapter. Like that was the chapter name. Sugar and Rainbows. Oh, that was that was a good chapter. Speaking of sugar and rainbows. Yeah. Oh wait, I there's no transition for sugar and rainbows. But what I will say we can transition to and from from and to is the news after this. And this is this is what really throws a wrench into all of our plans see we want to play all these great games that are coming out but games like apex and overwatch and diablo and those games that just don't end yeah they're coming yeah yeah they don't care they don't care so stay tuned for the news we're gonna be back for a second and remember to listen to the sponsor uh our sponsor from anchor they treat us well and it shows us a little bit of support for us as well so thank you so much and we'll be back in a second Hi, everyone. Yo, it's me, Adrian. And I got to give a shout out to our sponsor, Anchor, for being not only our sponsor, but also for being our host. Now, Anchor is an amazing way to record and publish, distribute your podcast. Seriously, everyone, we were looking through so many different options, but Anchor has been such a wonderful place and a home for us. Number one, it's free. Uh, It's free. Yeah, it's free. I said that three times because that was home for us. And also, you don't have to worry about uploading only a certain amount per month or getting rid of episodes. Free unlimited storage. So that is a huge point for us. And we also want to say that Anchor allows you to edit and upload your podcast, even record your podcast, not just from your computer, but also from your mobile device. That's right. I'm recording this from my mobile. Yeah, see, I sound just as good as on the PC. And that's really cool. You can do it anytime with friends and just be as creative as you want. And number three, and I think this is one of the best points, period, is that Anchor will even distribute your podcast for you. That's right. We don't know how on earth to get on any of the platforms that we need to, iTunes, Google Play Store for podcasts, but Anchor does. And you don't even have to do anything. They do it for you. So I'm just like, what? And it's on Spotify. My friends use Spotify. I use Spotify. Oh, hey, just share via Spotify. There's so many cool things that you can do. And of course, make money from your podcast without any minimal listenership. So this is really cool. I love Anchor because of these reasons. I love Anchor. That sounds like crazy. I'm advertising, but that's really cool. You know, I have to say thank you to Anchor just for that. And we hope you enjoy the podcast. Now, remember that you if you want to download the app, we encourage you to. We also in download, encourage you to go to uh, anchor.fm and try, try it out. Get your own podcast. It's really easy to get started. All you need is your phone. I don't even have to tell you to get a mic. Just your phone because it has a mic. See, that's amazing right there. So it's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. Thank you for listening, everyone, and enjoy the rest of the show. All right, we're back. Thank you for staying with us. And we've got news. Do-do-do-do. You're pregnant. Oh, wow. Uh, I need to get my life together. Yeah. <laughs> it's like when you hear those words, or you're in for a different type of game, there's no way to segue that. Uh, yeah. Well, what's the news? Well, what's in the news? So we this week... We've had some big news. Uh, f- starting off was EA Games are now going to be 
on Steam again, along with EA Access, their subscription service, which is which is huge. You yeah, because um, I was I was there for the great EA Exodus when they pulled all all their games out of um, and, off Steam. Back in 2011, I think something like that, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that effect that affected me like when I was trying to play Mass Effect three because I had one and two on Steam, right? And right. And then well, because that was the only place to really play them, unless you had a weird physical copy that didn't have Steam. Anyways, but I, I had Mass Effect one and two on Steam. Yeah. And then obviously I had to play three, right? That's and true. Then, and then Origin or EA was just like Origin only, and I was like, well, now my perfect library is split. So I have one and two on Steam, and then I have three on origin, origin. which is a which, pain in the bum uh yeah. but for i think for a limited time or i think even now you might be able to do it where you can right click on steam like the the game and then go to like key like you can see your key okay and then you can actually like just put that into origin and it'll just give you an origin okay. copy that's nice like um, yeah yeah i haven't used origin in the past i've only started using it with apex um, so is your Apex launcher is the only game you have installed? It's the only game I have installed. The actual EA service or the the uh, EA Access, which is available on like you know PlayStation, Xbox, and whatever else they have it on, is you know I didn't think EA had that much of a backlog. And then I started looking through everything. No, they have a lot of good games. They actually have a lot of games. There's, there's a lot of good games. The basic service is only five like five bucks a month. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking, you know what? I, at least for Dead Space Three. I'll do it. <laughs> I'll do it for one month. Uh, but it's it's interesting. I don't know. Like, how have, you, how have your experience has been with Origin? Um, you know what? I don't mind it. I mean, people give it a, a bad rap. They they hate it. They say it's bad. And I would I'll say it's not all that bad. It's it's I don't know, man. When you compare it to something like Steam, I do I do have to say it, it feels kind of jank at times. The overlay won't work for some reason. My overlay was some, upside yeah. Down. <laughs> Overlay is kind of weird. Like invites can be kind of kind of weird, but you know I've had to use Origin for Mass Effect Three, um, and I, I played other games on there as well. I played uh, uh, Plants vs Zombies on there, okay, and uh, some Crisis, and then Titanfall One and Two. So you know I've I, I've used it in the past, and I continue to use it for for Titanfall and for Apex. So right. so I, I joke with my friends. I'm like, oh Origin, you mean the Titanfall launcher? Because that's all we play that's, on it, but you know, I don't know. Like, and and the thing is, is they're going to be coming back with, of course, uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. That's the first game. That's the first one, which is uh, a respawn game as well. So that's also Apex and Titanfall. But maybe you should just call it a, a respawn launcher. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the respawn game launcher. And then after that, they'll be coming out with uh, Sims Four, Unravel Two, of course, Apex Legends, FIFA Twenty, and Battlefield Five. Mm-hmm. And you know, I. What is kind of weird, and uh, I mean, I don't know. They they say they're working on crossplay between both versions, but the EA Access service that is going to be separate. So if you pay for EA Access on, you know, Origin, you get of course the full catalog of Steam games or not of EA games. But if you pay for it on Steam, you don't have access to the entire backlog even it's, if you oh because it's only what's rest- like to what's available on the steam right, platform right. okay only if what's available on steam platform and say you just say okay fine i'll just download origins i can use it there nope okay so it'll it's kind of restrict separate. you it's restricted yeah so that i hope like maybe they can fix something like that but you know you know I kudos think, for being back i guess well that's a good thing but i was actually looking at the store page for star wars fallen order like right like earlier today and i'm looking at it right now yeah. and what's interesting if you look on the right side there's kind of some small print okay and it and it says incorporates third-party drm ea online activation and origin client software installation and background use required so, so you still have to have origin installed re- it really sounds like <laughs> it that. sounds like please use origin <laughs> So here's the thing. So this is how Ubisoft games actually work on Steam right now. So if I buy Rainbow Six Siege on Steam right. and I install it on Steam and I launch it on Steam, it actually launches Uplay. True. Yeah. So oh, I double man. I double click Siege on Steam. It launches Uplay and then it opens Siege from Uplay. So I suspect <laughs> this is the same thing. This is the same thing. Yeah. I, I guess whatever they have to do to get around, I don't know. But hey, they're back. That's great. I mean, EA, they had a great 
financial quarter, you know, that was one of their big news. Uh, one of the big news is that they said they also said, you know, Apex Legends hit 70 million players. What up? What up? You know, that's that's a our lot game. Of, yeah, it's a lot of players. I mean, there was a time when after season one launched, of course, was it about a month or two. So we'll say like March, April ish, where those numbers went down. You know, people were worried about Apex in the sense that it just couldn't sustain that initial launch. Yeah, but, that uh, hype was huge when they had like everyone play, like Ninja playing it, I think. Everybody jumped on Apex and it, and it really became something like everyone's like, oh crap, you know. Well, they were paying Ninja to play it, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, don't tell me, you know, it's already out there, but you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy because it's a game that I play a lot and, and I honestly can say, with each season they've gotten a lot better and more in tune so i'm not surprised by the numbers i'm really happy by them and it seems ea is going to be doubling down on apex for next year yeah it really seems that way um and i guess that's good for ea and that's good for for respawn uh, i do know that because i actually subscribe to the titanfall subreddit yeah and yeah, it's bad the, for a certain subgroup the the mood there is <laughs> is uh it's not great it's right. it's dark. I mean, so they said like, okay, we're definitely going for it with uh, Apex. Battlefield's going to take a year off, or it won't be back until at earliest, maybe uh, the first quarter of 2020 in April, or a little bit later. Uh, so potentially 2021. And Titanfall is in the air. Titanfall three is yeah. AFK. We just don't know. I mean, like, uh, unless respawn gets really big i guess and then they're like oh we have the resources now we can do apex content we can do we can do jedi support if, if there's anything for jedi um fallen order right. and then also we can make time fall but i just don't oh, wait think and also their big. random medal of honor don't oh yeah that, that, game. Well, yeah i forgot about that yeah completely, completely. <laughs> bring back another ea franchise like dude. yeah tell we tell you okay here, here's what i'll settle for give everyone jetpacks and and wall running and medal of honor and then we'll just call that time fall three <laughs> I, I, oh wait dude that would be sick yeah, just I guess. make yeah, titanfall but, vr titanfall vr that's it well it makes sense when you're in the titan when you're piloting a titan right yes i was and like then, just do that but no i guess that's it's that's perfect honor. a titanfall simp like that would be cool like mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. you yeah know, I, would, um, I would love to, to pilot like a titan paid for just pay us now pay us now yeah and along in the Apex news, Duos is coming in November 5th after the Halloween event ends. We're going to be playing that 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, uh, so it's just teams of two, right? But what's the max like size? How many um, players are in one match? Uh, you think I would have looked that up? Mm. Mm. Okay. Well, we know it's I, teams of two. It's teams, it's of, teams two of, of two. Okay, it's teams of two. I don't know if it's going to be still... Um, like 60 or 30 no 30 people right 30 30 so teams of two 30 teams of two so 60 people so 60 people that makes sense right because they're uh, just so taking off one person yeah 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 so you're just playing as a duo instead of a trio i wonder how that'll change the meta i wonder what the the meta for duos is like do you want like a lifeline and uh, I'm, just making, yeah. I'm just making well, stuff up here like i don't know like a lifeline and then maybe like uh i don't know like what's i really don't know i'm just making stuff up like well, what's the duo what do you think okay so here's my opinion many of us for the longest time have been playing duos you mean just like with a random and have that random exactly you're playing yeah. duo right there you're playing duo with a with a body sometimes <laughs> with, the, uh -huh. with that person who just goes down and you're like why were you even why do you exist? Honestly, yeah. I mean, you're going to see Wraith. You're going to see a Pathfinder. But on this map, it's really... It can't be just Wraith and Pathfinder. You know, I've seen a lot of... of I've seen some Watsons. I don't think it's... No, it's not that, that good for Watson. Caustic is okay, but at the same time... Caustic he, has, he has a huge places. He yeah. has a huge hitbox. But I would say Bangalore. I would say Bangalore over Gibraltar. Just because of the hitbox. Uh-huh. Um, and then and then who else? Like who's the other person then? Uh Wraith. So Bangalore Wraith? Bangalore Wraith is that's actually a pretty hype combo. You can you can defend yourself, you can escape, 
two different ways, smoke or with her um, into the void. Uh, you can tunnel out. You can, yeah, there's, that's good escapability, I think. And you can still engage pretty well with Bangalore. Yeah, you can. Um, yeah. And then Bangalore I take, that, that passive where if you get hit, you run faster. Exactly. So I, I, I would take that over a lifeline. And um, I mean, I don't, I, you know, Octane, maybe. Oh, I don't know. About Octane's Octane. kind of hard, you know, like, yeah, it, because of the map, the size now, it really is getting to the point where you need someone who can avoid some of those sniping battles or someone who can help in sniping battles. So positioning and movement and closing, you know, closing the gap or mm -hmm. getting away, mm -hmm. just, you know, that's just going to be it. I don't know how crypto fits into it because one per person is just waiting. <laughs> yeah. And then if he's just droning, right, he's not helping in a sense. I mean, he's sort of scouting, right? But he's, he's not scouting. Yeah. Yeah. Like a two person EMP just doesn't seem as meaty as a three person one. I don't, I don't mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. you know? So that's that's gonna be happening. Uh, I guess we'll be pairing up, or yeah, you know, we'll pair up. We'll pair up. Yeah, I, I was playing a bit last night, and uh, we had the random third, and we actually got carried and, a bunch. Of, we got carried a bunch of times, actually. Oh, we yeah, had really good third players. Yeah, this every once in a while you'll get the really good third player, the carrier. And you're like, yeah. this dude got skulls, hammers. All right, but he was just like. Um, he he wasn't playing like he was playing smartly like he was you know staying close and stuff like that he was moving. okay he wasn't one yeah. of those I have a I have like three thousand kills and I just run into Skull Town guy like no, well I had a couple we had a couple we had a, we had a couple of those there's really bad drops awful drops but... awful drops right <laughs> yeah you're like how do you have all these kills again oh man I just drop straight down and get one kill and start the next game so we dropped like uh, into Capital City yeah <laughs> it was so hot <laughs> it was like eight teams so I was like what is happening capital it was wild, it was capital wild. City, man that's yeah you gotta know your way around that place especially around it, like the big building that always has everyone in it everyone like, that drops there yeah uh -huh. i think was it i think i was playing with you or i was playing with someone else and we walked into that building on the first floor kind of like the garage area literally 10 death boxes all purple who needs oh. the loot room who needs the vault room <laughs> yeah 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 Purple and gold just all around me. And uh, yeah, of... that is EA games on Steam. So <laughs> it, this quickly becomes the Apex podcast. Anytime I put Apex news on our Twitter, someone likes it. I mean, we're just talking, we just talk about Apex all the time. But yeah, it's the Apex um, news. Well, what else you got? What's in the news? Uh, we got BlizzCon that just is currently that's going like, on. Slash... That's very recent. Yeah, that's it's very hot recent news right now. That's it's hot. hot. The press. It's hot. So what's what's your opinion? So they announced uh, Overwatch two, uh, Diablo four, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, that's it. World actually. of Warcraft Shadowlands. Oh yes, expansion. yes, World of Warcraft. And, and also uh, Hearthstone is getting an auto battler mode. I don't know. I guess it just does it for you. I don't know. The next expansion is Descent of Dragons. I'm not quite sure what that entails, but yes. Yeah, so I, we're, think, we're... I, I think we can agree that the biggest things here is uh, Diablo four, Overwatch two, and you know also World of Warcraft, but. Yeah, World yeah. of Warcraft gets. I feel like World World of Warcraft gets these these expansions that come out at set periods. You can kind of know you know when when, one, yeah, when, when it's one's coming out. Now. When it comes to like Diablo Four, it's like God knows, man. It's like up you don't in the know. Air. Yeah, because the last time w that we thought we knew, it was that mobile. It was the uh, immortal one, and that you know caused Ooh. a bit of a that caused a just, bit of a just horrible stuff there. Yeah, um, but for me personally. Overwatch 2, uh, that cinematic, there's an eight-minute eight mm -hmm. minute cinematic right? Uh, featuring, of course, it's called Zero Hour, has May, Tracer, Winston, and honestly, so here's the thing. Before I played Apex, I played, you know, 300-something hours of Overwatch. Before Overwatch 2 or Overwatch, I played 500-plus hours of Destiny. And Overwatch, what I love about the game or the characters and the personalities that they have. Uh, I love the community around it. And I mean, the game is solid. Don't get me wrong. We, me and my friends, we left Overwatch. We played on PS4. Uh, the reason we left was because here in Japan, we could not get games. We would literally have to wait five, sometimes like really seven to 10 minutes for, of course, competitive. That's one thing. Uh -huh. There are long waits for competitive, but we'd have to wait that for just a quick play. 
You know, if you uh, if you have it on PC, you can actually change your server to the American server, and you can get games all the time. Games quickly. So, yeah. like that's that was the reason we actually switched to Apex, and I'm trying to get them back into Overwatch because Overwatch Two that trailer just made me realize how much I love the characters, uh, how and just oh man. I think if you don't really care about the PVE mode, I think you can stay on Overwatch One. Because if you I'm can. not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, they they said they're putting all the the new maps and new characters in one. Yeah, so they're going to continue to support Overwatch One, and you're still going to be able to play with Overwatch One players. I I believe uh, so, all your yeah all your cosmetics are going to trans over transfer to Overwatch Two. The uh-huh. only changes, really, if you're going to get to, and I don't know how they're going to sell it. They haven't released any like release date information, but there's going to be co-op story mode um, missions. So there's so they're selling they're selling a story mode. Then is essentially what it is. They're selling. You could call it a DLC story mode. So um, okay, I I I, I kind of get why they're doing this because they don't want to destroy the the multiplayer community in a sense, and I, I right. understand that, but. If the only thing that sets apart these two products is the PVE story mode, yeah. why why call it Overwatch 2? That's a good question. We don't know the... Uh, there's actually some videos of people who've played the co-op campaign or parts of it. So I, I don't know how much different the engine itself is if they've kind of upgraded it. Because like it's a very simple like the the art design for the game i don't think even with you know a huge overhaul it's going to look different you know what i mean yeah it's going to look similar like it'll look like overwatch one so i mean obviously i don't know much about this game it's not out yet i don't live in the future but like from my from what i'm understanding it's just pve that they're selling uh so why call it two you know why not just like sell dlc or or call it something else like overwatch story mode or something i don't know you know what i mean like that's a good that's a good question and I'm, I'm sure if you know they'll unveil some more things you know closer to it but yeah even the 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 new hero sojourn uh who was announced as well she's going to be on overwatch one uh-huh, uh-huh you know to keep everything congruent so i don't know like if you just want to keep playing overwatch uh i guess you you still can I, i'm not really sure how i know what they did say is that for in between waiting matches or in between waiting for a match you'll be able to play like death match or play some other modes just for fun which is better than the skirmish they had i I guess it's almost the same as the skirmish oh my goodness it is almost the same but i I don't know we'll have to see how it plays out i'm excited just because um i'm excited for the story i think they do a good job with the characters individual stories but they do a horrible job with the overall world story of overwatch um yeah, Which and I think Apex maybe that's a good job. I think that's where that's where the story mode tries to cover those gaps. You know what I mean? Like maybe they're trying to do a better job with the storytelling. Yeah, they 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 have to. The the comic books, if you read them, they're free or good. I, I enjoyed those and they fill in a lot of the story as well. Uh but yeah, Diablo four. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I've I'm not as much of a Diablo player. I know you you said you uh you and your girlfriend play it. So how I don't know. Yeah, do you feel? we did play a lot of three um when that came out. Like right when that was like twenty 20- eight. 11 2012 right no 2011 yes oh wow 20. yeah i was still in university oh my word it's yeah, yeah. there was a while back so it was the end of 2011 we were playing three uh so this excites me way more um just because i of the amount of time that i put into three uh okay. i mean so i saw the trailer today yeah i showed my girlfriend and i was like hey the Apple four got announced you know take a look here's the trailer and she was like yeah, that's Diablo, right? <laughs> like, it, <laughs> no, that was her. That was her reaction. She was just like, "Oh yeah, it's, that's the that's Diablo." Like, she wasn't impressed. She wasn't like, "Well, that looks good." She wasn't like, "Oh, you know, that's interesting." She was like, "Oh yeah, just, that's that's pretty much it Diablo." It, it is what it is. Yeah. I mean, they said it that it does look a little bit more a, grittier, yeah, a, a grittier, or akin to, I guess, Diablo two. Uh-huh. Diablo three is, I don't know, it's a little more lighter, right? I guess it art, is a little bit. Wise. Yeah, um, I know a lot of people criticize it for that because it was like, oh, Diablo, it's a, it's a, you know, the name is of this game is Diablo, but I don't mind it. I didn't mind it that much. It's just like, I don't know. I was okay with me, but 
for sure this looks a lot darker. Um, and we'll see how it has to go. Well, how how it goes, I mean, when yeah, it comes out. Know. And God knows. When is this? Did they announce a date for this? No date? I, I don't think they announced a date for it. We're just, you know. So hoping. probably twenty end of 2020 is my guess. What's, what's your guess? Yeah, I mean, yeah, end of 2020 sounds about right. I. Okay. I, you know, actually, year. I could see, I could see it being middle twenty twenty. Dep- yeah. Oh I, man, I don't think so. I, no, I can see middle twenty twenty, depending on if they want to just. I, I don't remember when Diablo three released. If it was in the holidays, I don't think it was it during was, the holiday it was, season. It was the end of the year. I'm pretty sure it was like October okay. or something. Okay, I, I I could see that being the most realistically, but I'm going to say earlier. You if they like were in the, in the summer, yeah. Or something? It depends. So, I, I think they're, oh, they're pretty far along in this game. I was right. way off. Fight is wicked. Spring, uh, yeah, right? With, oh, Diablo 3 came out uh, May 15th. Okay. 2012. I was way off. The fact, though, is that it's we're at seven years now is is legit and crazy. Yeah, but Blizzard I thought it takes was like October, but no, no, May 15th, 2012, so... I, I I thought it was fall for some reason in my memory. I was like, yeah, definitely was cold when I bought it, but I guess it was not. So, hey, well, we are gonna gonna be playing that game. I mean, maybe you will be. You'll be playing it. I probably won't, but I don't know. I have a PC now, so yeah. And you, get on you it. I mean, no, it's it's gonna come over consoles. So I think they're gonna do a, a console version. Yeah, but I, you know, I want to be on that that on original the, on the source. Click, click, click. You want to be on, on that? Click, click, I want to be on the click click. click. Want to be on the click click. Man, you don't know how you don't know how much clicking you do in a Diablo game. You, you, know, you I hope you have a good mouse because you click a lot. <laughs> when I go back home, I do have Diablo two uh-huh. on disc. Oh, wow, it's like four I, disc or something, right? Well, I bought the. Oh wait, no, never mind. I don't. I have the Warcraft Battle Chess collection on disc. Never mind, or whatever. I screwed it up. Anyways, moving on because. Uh, Apologies were needed. Yeah, Blizzards came out and the president said, I'm sorry for mm-hmm. how we did this entire situation. It sucked. I mean, his exact words were, we moved too quickly in our decision. And then to make matters worse, we were too slow to talk with all of you. Right. Uh, well, I want to know how you feel about this. How legit is that? Or how much of this is covering for their, you know? I mean, they, um, okay, so we're. this is all still regarding uh blitz chung and his suspension yeah. from hearthstone right each week like we we predicted something has come up and this is the culmination because honestly i thought blizzcon was gonna be bad i, I mean it be, i thought it was gonna be you know, bad as well yeah 2018 I mean, was bad enough yeah well <laughs> there, fans, there are protests like right now go at blizzcon at blizzcon yeah so they had protest- protesters you know at the door mm-hmm. for the con lined up and dressed, dressed as Winnie the Pooh. Dressed as Winnie the because you know that man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know because I can say honestly, watching the Overwatch 2 trailer, mm-hmm. May is a central character in this. Before she's, you know, she has her own cinematic, but she was never really a spotlight character, right? Uh, oh, she, no. She, I mean, she's she, very, she, very popular. She's very popular, but. Whenever they got characters in a group setting together, it's always Tracer, Reinhardt, and um, ah crap, Mercy. That original team, right? That's why this new cinematic, they don't know May. Only like, you know, at the end, uh, I think Tracer introduces her to Reinhardt and Brigitte, like, oh, and this is someone new. You guys don't know her yet. This is May. So, like, I don't know. But May in that trailer is saying, we have to stick together. We have to unite. And I'm just thinking in my mind, Hong Kong. Oh, goodness. <laughs> goodness. Yeah. And I, and I never would have thought of that if, you know, the events didn't happen. I, I don't know. Honestly, yes, they're covering. This is complete backtracking. It still doesn't say how they went about making their decision. I don't think they need to per se. But I mean... There are multiple branches of Blizzard, as uh, right. me and Rivard talked about. I don't know if this was a call on the Chinese half or the American half. I don't know. That's fair. They never yeah. said. So I don't mm-hmm. know who actually made the decision. Did he okay it? I don't know. 
well he i don't know he's the president but we don't know how much like how much he overlooks the other the other branches of, of blizzard right right um but yeah no that's the thing so he they he came out and he was like i'm sorry and i mean i think if you just go look at the comments right now people are like some people are like you know that's bullshit like he doesn't mean this this doesn't mean anything from blizzard it's like, it's like the best you're gonna get like honestly i mean there's no way you can really be happy because it's it's already been done i talked to a friend today who used to play overwatch with me and he's like no i'm not i don't want to play overwatch too i don't want to support them mm -hmm. like if it's free to play sure you know maybe i'll even toss some money to the skins but the damage is done for him yeah and i understand that a lot of people um you know i feel that same way that this isn't going to be easily forgotten yeah uh we'll we'll have to see uh i think objectively when i think about blizzcon objectively right good overwatch 2 is that's great uh, diablo 4 that's exciting um and then you know wow expansion that's great and i think at the end of the day the truth is is that these games are made uh, by teams teams of creative people and they right. put a lot of work in these in these games so uh i think looking at these games these announcements blizzcon is it seems really positive i think it's 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 positive honestly yeah. I, I haven't seen it you know we haven't heard about fans standing up during the and, qa yeah and then and asking if it's like a joke or, or yeah exactly yeah. um but the fact that the you know blizzcon happened so close to the hearthstone thing and uh you know some people just they're not gonna they're not gonna forgive blizzard that easily right and uh, earlier the year yeah sorry go ahead earlier in the year you know they laid off was it 800 yes yes, yes. 800 yeah, employees they, yeah I mean, that happened too so there's I mean, it's just a lot of stuff there's a lot of bad blood for sure uh i just well i don't know how this will affect blizzard going forward like you know in 2020 are we still going to be talking about this or you know uh, will like people Will people be, you know, pre-ordering uh, Overwatch 2 and then not, you know, they've forgotten about their personal boycotts or whatever? That's, I mean, that's true. I, I mean, a lot of the kind of social justice movements or movements in general, you know, they come in phases, especially in the, the U.S. Um, there's, everything has a trend in a moment. So... We'll have to see. Honestly, it depends on Hong Kong too. That that situation, and how many times it, you know, gamers decide to, uh, to say their opinions and where they say them. If you continue to see it, then yeah, I, I mean, twenty twenty, I, I can see us still talking about this. If anything, reflecting on it before BlizzCon twenty twenty. Yeah, it's 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 so I don't know, man. Like the political climate we're not a politics podcast but like no we're we're over here in japan too <laughs> yeah it's just you know the events that have unfolded um it's just it's a very interesting time it's not just blizzard right people are accusing apple of, of bowing the chinese pressure as well um you know with them removing removing that app that allows uh people to track the location of police officers jeez jeez yeah Ooh. Yeah, so they they pulled it and then they added it back after some pressure, and then they pulled it again, um, supposedly after you know the Chinese government asked them to pull it. So and they did. Now it's it's still not back on the on the store. So, well, you know, it's it's one of those things where, oh no, uh, me I think Rivar said it best. Once you are, you maybe if you have your own company and you get into a foreign market and you start realizing the rules go completely different what you say may not go and what you kind of hope to to be may not be the case but hopefully i don't i don't know you know i hope things work out in the world for the best but we're moving on to happier times yeah free games for playstation plus members <laughs> oh yeah good good segue there so neil huh 
Yeah, Neo and Outlast too. I I, I don't want to scare myself, so I'm just gonna talk I'm about Neo. I I I like forgot the other game because I like read the headline and I was like, oh yeah, Neo. I don't care about the other game. Who who, who cares? I'm so I'm so hyped because okay, so I, I played like. Or I watched the demo for Neo 2, and after playing Bloodborne, looks good, it, was, huh? it looks, looks good. good. And I infamous, infamously do not like Team Ninja games. Really? Uh, really? Sorry, hold up. I like the way they look. I like the yep. way they play. I just can't play them because they have combos. Just give me a good old-fashioned Devil Make, like a Platinum combo style, and I'm good, but for some reason team ninja games like confuse me in combos so like ninja me. gaiden you can't you know you can't do those games or? i can't memorize the com i can't memorize them well oh man it's so weird it's like i can do it for bayonetta i can do it for devil make like devil may cry you just freeform like it's just free devil may cry is not that bad yeah but t- typically like platinum stuff it's whether you memorize it or not, it's mm-hmm. pretty free. It's Pl- platinum makes some great be. games, by the way. Platinum makes some good games. I gotta say, uh, I'm I'm gonna be playing another platinum game on Steam soon, hopefully. Eventually. Wait, which one? Uh, so I do have Revengeance on PS3, but I, are you gonna get on on PC? I'm gonna check it out on PC. Hopefully, it's not like a bad port or anything. I have it on on PC as well. And I will also be picking up. Um, it's like it's not a great port. Let's just say. <laughs> oh, okay. So maybe I should just go back and play it on PS3 then. Oh <laughs> uh, no, no. If it's cheap, you get it on PC, and uh, just be keep in mind that the resolution might be kind of weird. If you play it at 1080p, I think you'll be okay. Um, at 60 frames per second, which is what your monitor is. Like I'm, I'm at a high refresh rate, so it's kind of yeah. jank, I think. But yeah. Anyways. Okay. Uh, the other one I I can't remember. It's the the third person shooter that they made, where you just oh, dash. Yeah. Oh, it's Vanquish. That. Vanquish, yeah. I also have that on PC. It's all right. <laughs> well, so yeah, you'll be able to play Neo for uh, November's uh, lineup for PlayStation Plus, which is going to be yeah, November. I'm for, play that yeah. for sure. Yeah, Neo, mm-hmm. and then Neo 2. Finally got a release date. Finally, huh? Someone's going to get crushed. Oh my god, and it's oh god, I feel bad for Neo too. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. I feel bad for Neo too. Do you want to say these are different audiences? (laughs) Because they decided, yeah, March twelfth. Yeah, good luck with that, man. Twenty. Good luck with that. uh, Final Fantasy Seven is what date now? It's like I think is it also March twelfth? God, I hope not. (laughs) No, it's really close. I know. I think it's it's March twentieth. No, no, twenty second. March third. March third. Okay, March third. All right, so somebody may. I think you know people will pick it up. Yeah, you know what? I think the games are are different enough. Um, They're different enough, but to... the hype around Final Fantasy it's just, bro, you can't. Uh, is Neo even on? Is it going to be on a uh, Xbox Neo Two? I'll probably probably in in America only. I bet not in Japan. In Japan, we don't support. <laughs> no, like Xbox, we don't support. So, so many games <laughs> uh, in Japan. That are multi-plot that are just like no, we're not even going to bother. It doesn't make sense for them to put it out on Xbox here. They will lose no one, money. Yeah, they'll lose money. Money. There's yeah. You got me. You can put it out digitally, but yeah, and a lot of them are digital. Like That's if it. they if they do come out on Xbox here, it's digital only because they'll just lose money on on logistics. Like imagine storing a bunch of Xbox games that no one's going to buy. That costs money. <laughs> oh my word. Uh, next is so we're gonna close out with just like some other quick news here. Uh, as we know, Mixer is still on its rampage of getting people top mm-hmm. streamers. This mm-hmm. time they got Corey King, Goliathan, Michael, aka the man who plays some good Destiny. So uh, with a lot of um, well, not a lot. Sorry, I should rephrase that. With some big streamers moving from Twitch to Mixer, uh, what's your opinion on a? Uh, Mixer, is it viable? Is Mixer. it what should we be jumping ship? Okay, so just to give some background on him, he uh, has over you know just over a million followers. It's so, quite a lot, yeah. Which is you know a lot. And on t- Mixer now, he has about thirty two thousand uh, as of when the story was published, like earlier this week. But my thoughts on Mixer overall is, you know, I, I'm curious because I was curious about it before. And then once Shroud went, I looked into it some more. So I started looking into Mixer overall. 
And I have to say, if I just type in a random game, games that I like or games that I'm playing, like if I type in Soma, there's no one playing it. Yeah. If I, I type that. in Soma on Twitch, yeah. there's at least one. There's at least two or f- there's at least seven people. Uh-huh. And that's, uh-huh. you know, that means something to me because Mixer, all I saw were Battle Royale mm-hmm. and FPS. That's the high, those are the highlighted games. It doesn't mean that there's not other streamers on there. I saw someone playing Octopath Traveler, had like, you know, 30, 40 people watching, really good stream. But, you know, is it really going to be a place where other people can come to to see diverse content? That's the question. And if the people moving to it, if they're able to, to provide that and make it grow as a very rich service, and this is similar to what, you know, Xbox experienced. They just yes. had first person shooters. Yeah. And they it, had their it, fable and that was for the longest time. They ran that into a rut and that's how they ended up in the situation. Well, I, I feel like with, with Mixer, it's kind of a chicken and the egg situation, right? Yeah. So let's say I want to play Octopath Traveler. And I want to get a community. I want people to come watch me play. Do I take it to, you know, Twitch where there already are people who want to watch Octopath? Or do I want to try my luck in Mixer and potentially stream to no one? And potentially be that person that people find. Right. So do, yeah, either you stream to no one or you, or you're the person that, that starts it. You're the, like, you're the the originator person. Yeah. Yeah. So So it's, there's a lot of potential. And I will say, I do like Mixer's UI and settings. Like just overall, I think that they've done a good job of making it feel simple and easy to navigate as opposed to Twitch, which the front page is cluttered. I don't like how they highlight streamers. I like how, of course, these are big streamers like, you know, Shroud and Ninja and whoever else on the front page for Mixer. I mm-hmm. love how it has their picture. It literally just, it's their picture. It's it very, actually like, shows their picture. Yeah. It actually shows their picture or whatever they want shown. And it's very clear. Like, I want to watch this person. I want to watch this. Like, for sure. Um, and um, I, and I, yeah. It, it, it is, I think, laid out in a way that is more can. Conducive, that's a word, right? More conducive, conducive to finding content. Yeah. So I'm on Mixer right now and I'm scrolling down. I have the featured stream, which is very similar to what it is on Twitch, just like hot streams right now. Right, right. Down is partner spotlight. So the uh, spotlight, so his shroud and like all the big uh, streamers on the platform. Top games, right. like what most people are watching. And then right there below that is who am I following? Yeah. So if I follow you on Mixer and you're live, I can be like, oh, hey, oh, I'm going yeah. to jump, can, gonna jump to your stream right now. You yeah. can see. And there's like the up and coming as well. Yeah. So the fact that they promote smaller streamers, I think is great. It's great. Uh, and it, uh, it's, it really is going to be something to see because I like some of the features. Uh, mix play, of course. That's just where everyone can. I believe that's the co-op f- feature, if I remember. Uh, so when, when two streamers can stream together on a single page, right? Right, right. Yeah, um, that's, that's a thing that Mixer can do. Uh, you can also kind of have choices within the game. You, if, you, know, you can use the currency to, for example, if you're playing a Bioware RPG or just playing an RPG, right? Fallout. And the dialogue choices, you can have the audience like actually pick them for you. Yes, 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 yes. It's, yeah, there's a lot of interactivity on Mixer, which makes there's, it fun for a community. It makes it really fun. The only issue right now is it's not integrated into a lot of games. Just, you know, Fortnite or Minecraft, you know, just just the kind of big ones that we know people will be playing. Um, so I, I don't know, like, I hope it grows because it's doing some interesting things, I think. Mm-hmm. But it just it's just going to depend, like you said, if people want to be that originator or if right. they want to go where they feel like someone will actually watch. <laughs> it sounds horrible. Will actually watch. Yeah. So I think um, the question of how to build a streaming audience is it's I don't I don't think you should be relying on Twitch or Mixer exclusively uh, to get your views. Right. I think. It would be probably better to have a second account uh, like a Twitter or maybe like this podcast, for example, where yeah. you can be like, hey, guys, you know, 
I, do you like this content? Do you like, you know, if you want to see more of me, I'll be streaming. And then you can kind of pull over an audience that way. Yeah, because what we've learned is that these these, these streams are no longer about the games themselves, but the ones yeah. that people continue to follow are about the people, you know? Yeah. Just, this is I my agree. variety show. Rivard does this literally. This is what he, he does. He's like, oh, you know, I like this too. I'm going to go follow him. And whenever he's on, I, you know, it's, it's what I watch instead of watching Netflix sometimes. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And it's just like, so either there are two types of streamers, I think. There's those people who are likable as people. And it doesn't really matter so much as to what they play. People just like hanging out. Yeah. And then there's people that are really good at the game. These are speed runners. These are like pro uh, esports players, those kind of people. Right. Uh, so it's like a spectrum. So if you aren't a pro player and you're not interesting, you're going to have a hard time. It's a, yeah, it's the, it's the way the game is played. But you know who's not having a hard time is Shigeru Miyamoto. Because as a person of cultural merit, the Japanese government has honored him. That's a title, huh? I hope he puts that on his, on his business card. Person of cultural merit. He's like, look at me. I'm, look at me, I'm... I'm the man. <laughs> I'm important to the country, yeah. But no, I think legit, uh, the man has earned it for sure. He's definitely earned it. And, you know, from generation to generations to, I don't, Mario's are what, four generations now? Three? At least three? Uh, well, what, early or mid 80s, right? Is when that came mid-80s. out? Mid 80s, yeah. Um, so generation so- 10 years? A That's generation. Decades. I don't know how long a generation is. How many kids? Uh, yeah, it's like how many kids have played. So if, if for example, if my granddad, my grand, that's a weird question. Sorry, my dad. I didn't. I don't mean granddad. If my dad, dad was playing Mario, yeah, and I had a kid and he was playing Mario, that would be three generations. So at least I think we, we can say three, but you know, it's, a, it's about three. Yeah, it's I would about say three. That's crazy, man. But definitely kudos to him and um, Nintendo as always, be doing it big, switching it up, making moves. I just combine way too many slogans in there. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, wait, so who, this is an official award that the government handed out to him or what? This is an official award that the Japanese government uh, has for, you know, people who are making important cultural contributions. And so it's not just him only. There's also, you know, a couple of more in the fields, but it's mainly for, uh, arts, music, science, academia. Right. So apparently, and twenty now, other, well, twenty okay. people in total were named this person. Why is it person of cultural merit? Oh, it's twenty. I thought it was just one dude, and it was me and Moto, no, but no, no it's, it's a lot of people. 20. Okay. Yeah. So he's, he's he's one. He's one of many. Then he's one, one of, of several. Many. Well, not many. He's one of several. Yeah. But uh, no, that's cool. Uh, I feel like he he's such a big name that even if you're not a gamer, you maybe know who he is. And I think that speaks volumes to just how culturally significant he is. Right, right. And so, like, I guess for past honorees, uh, Shigeru Mizuki of Gegege no Kitaro. So that's like he won in 2010. And then, you know, Studio Ghibli's How Hayao Miyazaki won mm-hmm. in 2012. So it's, it, it's like names that you... You definitely know manga creators, filmmakers, uh, who've been making and creating content for, you know, ma- a long part of their lives, 30, 40 years, you know what I mean? Yeah, and, and I, selling. Would say, I would say, you know, these people have earned it. They've made it big. They're the top they of their class big. for sure. Who else, like, other than Miyamoto, like, name me one more game developer who has that kind of pull. That has, like, that pool i mean you could have said sid meyer before sid meyer fell off the sid meyer boat and um <laughs> uh crap who was the sims guy warren warren specter yeah warren specter like you can argue some of the other but creators he... like kojima yeah i think the the, the question but decades is like... like decades wise i mean you, you can only go from those people like in the west yeah that's true it's it's you know people who were doing PC games, so like original creators for Bio, like like a John Romero or something, right? Yeah, yeah. There's not many, and that's one thing I was kind of worried about uh, at one point. Like, there's not a lot of like who's the next Miyamoto? You know what I mean? Like who's the next? Mm-hmm. There has to be one. 
Right. And right. I, I, I don't want to say Kojima. And as a fan of Kojima's games, I don't think it's him. That's because Kojima only makes... I, I, well, I mean, like the thing about Miyamoto or and Nintendo and, or those products is that they're, like I said, we just said generations. And they're so universal. They're, they're so universal. universal. Like I can, my mom can enjoy a Mario game, right? Yeah. Well, I would never be like, mom, let's play Death Stranding together. You know what I mean? Like, mom, please watch me play Death Stranding and then fall like, asleep. But make sure you have some popcorn. It might like, be interesting. You know, let's play Metal Gear Solid together. I would never say that. Um, yeah. But I mean, the games that he's involved with, the games that he has uh, produced in some manner or something like that, they're great games. They're really universal and they're very, very accessible. You know, it doesn't matter what kind of gamer you are. And that's the key. That's that's honestly the the, the the key to it all is you have to be... I mean, you don't have to. That's just... I don't know. There, I, you see it in a lot of media that is very popular. Mm-hmm. It's just like you said, that universal. I don't know. I was going to say a word that doesn't exist. It's very relatable. There we go. Easy to get into. Easy to understand. It's good for both men, for women, and anyone else. You know what I mean? It mm-hmm. doesn't. Your dog could enjoy it. Okay, maybe not your dog. But well, depends on how good smart your dog is, but yeah, if your dog can press the buttons and play, yeah, but, did you say like, there's a gift of a guy who taught his dog how to play Minecraft? <laughs> no, yeah, <laughs> go look it up, anyways. <laughs> so, we we have hit like our uh, our mark, we're almost closing out an hour and 20 somehow. Like, we're amazing. This is, amazing. Every week, every week, these episodes get longer, we're, we're getting longer, we're getting so used to it. But thank you so much for, for joining the podcast, everyone, for listening. Uh, once again, I want to give a couple shout outs to some people on Twitter or f- a couple of followers that I've uh, noticed. If you're listening. Yeah, you're very appreciated. Thank you. You're very appreciated. So let me let me pull. You leave a voice message on anchor.fm slash UGP yes. for cast. That would be cool. That would be that That's would be amazing. Out. UGP cast. <laughs> Ignore me. <laughs> anchor.fm backslash UGP cast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My point is, uh, leave a voice message. That'd be cool. Leave it. Leave it. Uh, I, I want to to give a shout out to. Ooh, 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 ooh. Did I miss something? I missed something. Oh, the uh, elusive can... rabbit. There we go. Can elusive we... rabbit oh. five. Uh, okay. He he plays Apex, and yeah, super super. Thanks for liking our tweets, and also, you know, watch a couple of the streams or videos you've posted. Yeah, keep going after it. He he posts uh, every day, so be sure to check him out. I just want to give a shout out. You know, that's it. I just want to cool. shout out. Well, thanks to mom for supporting me. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate everything you've done. Uh, thank you for uh, helping me and my hobbies, even though I don't make a lot of money. Does she get the cultural award? <laughs> like the, the award? she gets the award of supporting <laughs> my ass for my whole life. And if you are still listening to us and supporting us at this moment, yeah, we're just going to say thanks. We're going to tune off. Remember, you can find us on iTunes. You can find us on Google Podcast, Anchor F.FM, Spotify. And I probably missed something else, but leave a five star review. Leave a literally comment. Literally everything. Yeah. Literally everything. Except for, I'll find out what we're not on. But yeah, leave a review, leave a like, leave a voice message. We'd love to hear from you. And until next week, we're going to be out. Uh, yeah, remember, you set the tone, put something out good into the world, and enjoy playing games. See you. Be good.